Welcome to your AP Statistics Chapter 14 video number one. Um, today we're going to talk about going from randomness to probability. Um, a random phenomenon is a situation in which we, we know what outcomes could happen, but we don't know which particular outcome did or will happen. In general, each occasion upon which we observe a random phenomenon is called a trial. At each trial, we note the value of the random phenomenon and call it an outcome. When we combine outcomes, the resulting combination is an event. The collection of all possible outcomes is called the sample space. All right, well, those were a bunch of little definitions. Now, a big definition um, that's important to know before we move into the law of large numbers. When thinking about what happens with combinations of outcomes, things are simplified if the individual trials are independent. Roughly speaking, this means that the outcome of one trial doesn't influence or change the outcome of another. For example, coin flips are independent. I can flip a coin and, it's not, and get a certain outcome. Let's say it lands um, on heads. Well, the coin doesn't remember that it just did a head, so to balance things out, it needs to do tails. The next coin flip is either going to be heads or tails, independent of what the initial coin flip was. The law of large numbers, LLN, says that the long run relative frequency of repeated independent events gets closer and closer to a single value. We call that single value the probability of the event. Because this definition is based on repeatedly observing the event's outcome, the definition of probability, um, this definition of probability is often called empirical probability. Remember, empirical is always uh, in reference to data. It's always in reference to, to keeping track of what actually happens. So the definition of probability as the single value that is the long run relative frequency of repeated independent events then uh, that value is the probability. The law of large no numbers says nothing about short run behavior. Relative frequencies even out only in the long run. And this long run is really, really long, infinitely long in fact. The so-called law of averages that an outcome of a random event that hasn't occurred in many trials is due to occur doesn't exist at all. So, for instance, if um, a family, if, if we say that it's given that the gender of each baby is independent of other babies born to a family, if that family's had three boys, sometimes you'll hear people say, oh, well, they're do a girl. You know, chances are, you know, laws of probability state that they're going to have a girl next. That's not true. If they had 100,000 babies, then um, we would expect roughly half to be boys and roughly half to be girls. But people people do not have large enough families for um, the law of large numbers to uh, take over. All right, modeling probability. When probability was first studied, a group of French mathematicians looked at games of chance in which all the po possible outcomes were equally likely. So yes, essentially, uh, this whole field of math is rooted in gambling, okay? And so people wanted to study it because they wanted to know how to, how to maximize their profits in um, playing games of chance. They developed mathematical models of theoretical probability. Now, before there's empirical probability where you just look at what happens over and over and over, now they're going to kind of do some generalizations. They, they've seen some patterns. They have developed some theories, and they developed a branch of theoretical probability. It's equally likely to get any one of the six outcomes from the roll of a fair die. Die is the singular for dice, so that makes sense. It's equally likely to get heads or tails from the toss of a fair coin. However, keep in mind that events are not always equally likely. A skilled basketball player has a better than 50-50 chance of making a free throw. Okay, so there, if somebody's super skilled at making a, a free throw, maybe 90% of the time they make it and only 10% of the time they miss. The probability of an event is the number of outcomes in the event divided by the total number of possible outcomes. So probability of A, 
and that's how you read that, probability of A is equal to the number of outcomes in A and the number of possible outcomes. In everyday speech, we, when we express a degree of uncertainty without basing it on long-run relative frequency or mathematical models, we're stating subjective or personal probabilities. So if someone's having a party this weekend, you might say, oh, there's about an 80% chance that I'm going to show up. That's not because you've kept track of how often this person's had parties and the relative frequency of times that you showed up. At least, I hope not. <laughs> That's not how most people run these things. Um, it's just more of an internal feeling of, yeah, more likely than not, but not definite, so 80%. Personal probabilities don't display the kind of consistency that we will need probabilities to have. So we'll stick with formally defined probabilities. All right, three rules for working with a probability. Uh, we are dealing with probabilities now, not data, but the three rules don't change. Make a picture, make a picture, make a picture. The most common kind of picture is to, to make is called a Venn diagram, and we will see Venn diagrams in practice shortly. We'll be looking at other pictures. We'll be looking at tree diagrams all kinds of things, but Venn diagrams are going to be very helpful for you. All right, formal probability. There are two requirements for a probability. Um, a probability is a number between 0 and 1. So for any event A, 0 is less than or equal to the probability of A, less than or equal to 1. And the probability of, a, of this set of all possible outcomes of a trial must be 1. The probability of S, where S represents the set of all possible outcomes, is 1. Something must occur. The complement rule, the set of outcomes that are not in the event A is called the complement of A, denoted A with the superscriptive C, so for A complement. The probability of an event occurring is 1 minus the probability that it doesn't occur. Something must occur, so the probability of A is equal to 1 minus the probability of A complement. You can also solve this little equation for probability of A um, complement and get that probability of A complement is equal to 1 minus the probability of A. The addition rule. Events that have no outcomes in common and thus cannot occur together are called disjoint or mutually exclusive. You'll hear both of those terms used frequently. You need to be familiar with both. They mean the same thing. So in this Venn diagram that you see here, you can see that A and B are disjoint because there's no overlap. They are mutually exclusive. If one occurs, the other cannot occur. So for instance, if we were rolling a die, rolling a single fair die, it is impossible to get an outcome of that is both even and odd. Okay, either your outcome is even or your outcome is odd. For two disjoint events, A and B, the probability that one or the other occurs is the sum of the probabilities of the two events. Okay, they're disjoint, there's no overlap, so the probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B provided that A and B are disjoint. Now, multiplication rule is for two independent events. So that's different than disjoint events. So for two independent events, A and B, the probability that both A and B occur is the product of the probabilities of the two events. So the probability of A and B is probability of A times probability of B, provided that A and B are independent. Two independent events, A and B, are not disjoint provided that the two events have probabilities greater than zero. So if they are events that actually occur, they're not impossible events, and then they're going to have a probability that is greater than zero. So they cannot be disjoint. Um, and the reason for that is because A occurring has no, no effect on the probability of B occurring. Um, mutually exclusive or disjoint events, let's go back and look at our picture here, if I know that A occurs, the probability of B occurring is zero because there's no overlap. Likewise, if I know that B occurs, I know the probability of A occurring is zero because they have no overlap. So if A and B take up any space at all, if their probability is greater than zero, they happen, then they have to have some overlap. Okay, because the probability of B occurring has to be the same whether or not A occurs. 
Okay, A occurring can't give you any information about the likelihood of B and vice versa. Many statistics methods require an independence assumption, but assuming independence doesn't make it true. Always think about whether that, that assumption is reasonable or plausible before using the multiplication rule. Okay, that's it for video one. We're going to come back with putting the rules to work in video two, and then we will also look at a couple of examples. All right, I'll see you in a few minutes.